So in the next module, um, number three of this lecture, we'll discuss certain kinds of large scale, in a sense, uh, machine learning methods based on optimization. So um, I already hinted at that in a previous lecture. If you are not trying to characterize the distribution of the data or so, uh, and instead just directly try to optimize the parameters that govern this, uh, say this plane if it was a plane, or the generally the parameters of the mapping from the space under features, if you do that, then um, well, you are only optimizing uh, certainly not number of parameters squared values or so. So it's in that sense already more tractable. And it turns out for certain classes of predictive mappings, it gives rise to very simple optimization problems. There are several methods in this framework. There are support vector machines, um, which has a certain kind of criterion on this plane. There is a generalized linear models, which don't find a plane. They find sort of a vector that is orthogonal to that, in a sense, and perhaps the scaling of that. Um, so that's the kinds of um, methodologies that we want to look at how to optimize theta given some data in a linear formulation. And we're going to look at one specific case of such a mapping, linear mapping or generalized linear mapping, from an observation x onto an output y. We'll say the output is, um, um, we'll declare y here as, as either plus 1 or minus 1, positive or negative class. There's generalizations for multiple classes. Um, we're not going to cover these here. Um, oh, wait, let me go one back. Uh, this term, f theta of x, is, we say this is a linear function. Um, actually, I have it here. This might be the thing. It's the same stuff that we saw before. If x is a vector and this is a vector plus b, that gives you a scalar. Um, if you put in the whole data matrix, it would give you a vector of predictions. So it's just a linear function. Um, and the rest of the scaffolding here, that's the logistic mapping. Um, or a logistic function, uh, it for a certain scalar between you say minus infinity and plus infinity, it maps it to zero to one. So we get a smooth output. We can interpret this output actually as a probability that something is, um, you know, is either plus one or minus one, so to speak. If we, you know, if you plug plus one in here and here, that's you can interpret this as the probability that this is the positive class that you're looking at for some data. So basically, instead of a distance from a hyperplane, what you get is a probability, OK, and it behaves in this kind of uh, way if you vary the underlying data. So um, that's a logistic map um, or link function, this part here. And that's what we're going to use, because the reason is we want to predict classes still, um, mostly in BCI, actually. Sometimes if you predict continuous values, you can drop this extra stuff and directly work with that mapping. Um, and so that's just uh, more useful for that kind of case. It turns out now, if we want to optimize the theta under this um, assumption, there is an associated loss function for some data and some known labels, data matrix, label vector. This is the same f, which looks like this. And it's called the logistic loss. Um, it quantifies basically the mismatch between the data and the labels. Um, and so um, if we say optimize theta such that this is minimal, minimal discrepancy, we have basically uh, you know, found um, the right solution. You know? And if, if that stuff is to be interpreted as spatial filters we, um, that pick up some source, we would have the spatial filters. You can use any off-the-shelf optimizer to optimize this smooth loss here. Uh, I mean. Um, for example, CVX can do it and so on. Uh, I mean, there's optimizers which are not applicable to this function of form, but um, you know, you could you could write this up as a function and, and derive the gradient and use gradient descent, for example. So uh, I should say this is convex. So that's why it's useful. Um, there is, however, one thing, and this is it is still easy if you have ten thousand parameters to to learn and you have only a hundred observations or so to overfit to noise in the data or random sampling bias or things like that. And so um, to fix that problem, we're back talking about regularization. Um, if you have extra assumptions about um, the parameters, such as, I think my parameters are smooth, or I think my parameters are in some other way simple, uh, or I know there's a systematic bias 
it may not show in, up in the data, but I know my parameters are governed by that bias in some way. You can make sure that you're accounting for that in your final solution. And usually, it's an extra added cost. Uh, and typically, you, you, want to, you don't necessarily know how much you have to trade this off versus the data term. This is the regularization term. This is the data term. And so you have a parameter, regularization parameter. It's just a number, lambda, that you can search over. You can use cross-validation and parameter search to, to find the right setting. That's very straightforward. You, know, you just try a bunch of values and, and see how well it works. Um, so the, the key is, I think I, did I click too much here? No. The key is what kind of stuff you put into this omega of theta. It's a function of your parameters, and it sort of quantifies costs that, that are um, in agreement with your assumptions that you had. And there's a few that give rise to convex terms here. Um, if this is convex and that's convex, the whole sum is still convex. Um, and so it's still easily solvable with local optimization. That's why we're usually looking at certain kinds of forms. And one standard choice is the squared L2 norm of, of this weight vector or matrix. That will penalize you know, large weights uh, with the square of their value, basically. And so um, basically, it'll just drive the, the profile of your weights down. Uh, so you get generally rather small weights. And in a sense, you say your solution is sort of contained in a, in a volume in, in 3D space, say, um, that is small or compact or whatever. So if you use that term here, you will get, for some regularization parameters, solutions that are well less prone to overfitting because they, they aren't as flexible. Um, they're constrained, in a sense. Um, and that's one way to, to regularize. Another term, which is extremely popular now, is the L1 norm, which is the sum of absolute values of components. And uh, it turns out, um, perhaps not exactly intuitively, although there's some intuition that you can look up, which uh, if you use this penalty, uh, you will drive many values of theta down to 0. Um, and so you, the only, there's only a few non-zeros surviving in theta, basically, at the optimum. And uh, in, in this sense, you learn only a small number of parameters effectively. Many of them are going to be 0. And that is, this is a phenomenon that's called sparsity. Um, so if you assume that your weight vectors are going to be sparse because only a few of them are going to be necessary, say a few parameters, and many of them aren't, you can, use, you can frame it such that you can use this penalty term. And then you get sparse solutions. And it really just amounts to putting this into your cost function and deriving the gradient and so on. Since this is non-smooth, you have to do something about being able to deal with that, say, use a non-smooth optimizer or so. Um, there's a few variations of that. And, and in fact, there is probably 20 different regularizers or so that people have been tossing around in the last few years. There's combinations of, say, sparsity in, in, in small values. There's things that operate on differences between values and so on. You can drive whole groups of parameters down to 0 and achieve group, group sparsity and so on. Um, there, there are lectures on this uh, from uh, someone named Francis Bach, B-A-C-H. Uh, it also show up in the literature at the end of the lecture, um, who has extremely good lectures on, on sparsity and various kinds of convex optimization problems and so on. It's really, really comprehensive. I uh, highly suggest that you read that. But um, that is sort of um, all we need from large-scale machine learning for now. Uh, in this module, and we'll apply it to some uh, BCI problem next.